Hi guys, welcome to or welcome back to my channel and if I'm welcoming you back and you like it here I'd love it if you stayed and subbed. You can tell by the title what I'm about to talk about but I just don't know where to start. At the beginning, I was raised, if you can call it that, by a single Irish narcissistic mother. Um, and for all my life, I thought she was pissed off at me because she was single. My dad wanted nothing to do with me. And she blamed me because I looked like him, apparently. Um, but it wasn't. It was just the fact that she was a narc. So, topped with the fact that she hated looking at me because she rem I reminded her of him and her huge mistake that they made can I just underline that they made for all of us illegitimate children that have gone through life being called all the names under the sun it wasn't our fault at some point were we in heaven going I know I want to be that person's child and I want to be persecuted for my entire life because they made a huge mistake and had sex outside of marriage or inside of marriage in some cases and produced a child. Let's just kick the shit out of that child for every day for the rest of their life. No, nobody chooses that. So, born to a single Irish mother who was a nightmare. So I never asked anything about my dad. I just knew there wasn't one. Um, I was looked down upon by my uncle's wife and all her friends and my cousin who, uh, what we were, I was at her house once. See what happened, what used to happen was uh, every other weekend or whatever, I'd go to an uncle's house for the weekend. And when I went to one uncle's house, we were there this day and there was somebody there, I don't know who it was, that was playing the saxophone, playing yakety sax in the back garden, which is the da 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 from Benny Hill. So we all start running around the garden like the end of Benny Hill. For American viewers, I will try and find a clip and put it in. I'll have to put it in with no sound probably because I'll get dinged for yakety sax. But anywho... So we were doing that, and I don't know how old I was. I was very young. Anywho, we all came in, absolutely knackered, plonked on a settee, and there was me, my uncle, and my cousin. And she bolted up and she went, don't you dare sit next to my daddy just because you haven't got one. And my gran happened to be there that weekend, and she was absolutely fuming. She wanted to slap her. And it was like, that's what I had to put up with, being called a bastard, the whole nine yards. Anywho, so never asked about my dad, wasn't in the least bit interested. Went to secondary school and they said, you can learn to play an instrument, pick an instrument. And I was like, cool, can I learn the saxophone? And they're like, no, sorry, we don't, use, we don't do the saxophone, but you can play clarinet. And I was like, mm, OK, I'll do clarinet. Came home from school that day with a clarinet in a case. I says to my mum, oh, we got to choose an instrument today and I picked the clarinet. She went drip white. And I'm like, so were you. I said, I asked for the saxophone, but they and that then she looked like she was going to puke. And it's like, what is the problem? And then she told me that my dad played the thing and it was like, oh. And then at some point, I can't remember when, I was told that he had a shop in Ireland. And I was like, cool, I'm going to go over there one day. I'm going to go in his shop. I'm going to pick out the best saxophone and clarinet and I'm going to walk out the door with it. And when he says, who are you, where are you going? I'm going to say, take it off of the child maintenance you owe me. Never did, obviously. Um, so that was that. Move on. I'm 19. My aunt, the one who looks down at me, Decides, wouldn't it be a good idea if I met my dad? Because if she was going to wait for my mum to arrange it, it had never happened. So she arranged for me to go to Dublin to meet my dad. I was going to stay with a family friend. So I'm with the family friend and she said, right, um, you're meeting, I 
I can't even remember what it was. It was a hotel in Dublin on the main drag. And he'll be there at whatever time. So I was like, great. So I got there, looked around reception. And I said to the woman at the reception desk, I said, is it OK if I sit here? I'm meeting somebody and it doesn't look like they're here yet. And she said, yeah, of course. Sat down, got my book out, was reading my book. And I realised I'd got through like three or four chapters and there was no sign of this bloke. And I'm like, no. Eh. So I had, I'm going to see if I can find these pictures and put them in. But I had this tiny weeny little piece of cardboard with him on it. And back in the day, when you were in a, a show band, as they called them, that played all the, the clubs, they had little cardboard, like postcards, that they'd hand out to people and they'd sign them or you'd just get the card and stick it up on your wall, whatever. So she'd cut him out of this group and that was it. That's all I had was this tiny little bit of cardboard. And I'm looking at it and I'm looking at the people in the place and there's nobody that looks like him. And I thought, oh, bugger this, I'm phoning more aid. So I get up and I said to the reception, I'm really sorry they haven't shown up. Can I use the phone? She said, of course you can. So I rang more aid and I said, um, I've been here all this time. I said, nobody's shown up. And then this bloke who'd been sat at the back having a pint of Guinness stood up and walked towards me and just stood beside me. And I said, oh. And she said, did he just walk in? I said, no, he was here all the time talk to you later put the phone down well this picture you'll see what if i put the pictures in this picture i had was a bespeckled blonde ish haired bloke the bloke that walked up to me had a flat nose, curly hair, didn't look anything like this. And, and that was him. Anyway, so we went for a drink somewhere and I was saying, you know, I'm, I'm looking for him. And he was like, oh, yeah, a, a, a bullock crashed into the car and broke his nose years and years ago. And it was like, oh, right. So and um, we're chatting and everything's going fine. And then he says the immortal line. I only married my wife because she was pregnant. And it's like, one, why are you telling me that? Is that supposed to endear me to you somehow? Oh, you know, your mum probably would have been my wife if she told me she was pregnant first or whatever. Anywho, then we went for a Chinese. Then he drove me back to more aids. And as I'm getting out of the van, he said, what are you going to call me? I was like, does he actually expect me to call him dad? I'm 19. This is the first time I've ever laid eyes on him. And he's saying, what are you going to call me? I was like, night, Barry. And I just shut the door and went back to more raids. And he had said in the meeting that when I said I played clar clarinet and saxophone, he was like, oh, you're the only one that ever was drawn to play those instruments and I was like oh well maybe you should have married my mum <laughs> so that was that I'm trying to think when was the next time he was playing at the Cork Jazz Festival and we were over there on holiday and we went one night someone took a picture of the three of us and for some reason my mum's in it like that I'm there and he's like a teeny little thing at the side. I think he was cut in half. I don't know who took the picture, but anyway. So we, we were there that night. Ah, no, before that. Met him when I was 19. I'm in the pub. It's Christmas. I'm working. Phone goes and my governor says, uh, Barry's on the phone for you. And I'm like, ooh, is he... Ringing to wish me a happy birthday. That would be a first in fucking 27 years. So I picked up the phone and I was like, hello. And he says, oh, I'll ring to wish you Merry, uh, Merry Christmas. And it's like, yeah, it's my birthday as well. Oh, is it? Yeah. Never mind. And um, he says, Sean's here. He wants to talk to you. His son. 
Sean thinks, well, Sean's been told he's on the phone to his friend in London. So Sean comes on the phone. So I'm like, hi, Sean. Happy Christmas. How are you? I know who you are. Sorry? I know who you are. I said, who, who do you think I am? You're my sister. I was like, can someone get me a chair? And I'm like, how do you know? It's dad got letters from you and he hid them in his saxophone case and I found them. I was like, oh, so how does that make you feel? That's great. When can we meet? Fine. I said, does everyone else know? He's like, Aidan, I'm like, don't shout up the stairs at your brother. Hello, do you know you have a sister on Christmas Day? This isn't going to go down well. And um, that was that. And then I spoke to Sandra, who's the little one, who was so giddy. And I said, has Santi been? Yeah. What did he get? He got me a bike. And she says, I'm getting ready now. I said, you can't go out now in the snow. on but Santi wouldn't have brought me a bike if he didn't want me to ride it. <laughs> It's like, God. So he comes back on the phone. I'm like, oh, did you know? He said, no. I said, well, that's one way to break the ice. So that was that. And Sean said that he wanted to meet up. Anyway, a couple of years later, Sean moved to London. And I was living with a couple because I was working in the pub and the governor didn't have people live in. So I lived with this couple and worked in the pub. But then I left the pub and was working um, at a pet shop. And I'd got myself my own flat and every so often I'd go back to see the couple that I used to live with in the pub for a drink and she said oh this letter came for you and I opened this letter and it was from Sean and he said you know I've been putting it off and putting it off because I didn't think you'd want to meet me blah 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 so I contacted him back and I said where the hell are you and he was up the road from me so we arranged to meet and we went out for a drink and I took him around and then I took him to my uncle's club and introduced him to my cousin and his wife and whatever. So that went well. And then five minutes later, he was back in Ireland again. I think he'd only come over for so long to go to college to do something or whatever. So that was that. Then we went to the jazz festival. And I went over and was sat with his wife. Talking to her. And she was saying something about Sean. And I said, uh, he should get contact lenses. Because it did the world for me. And he was the same as me. He had big jam jar glasses. And this woman is pricked up beside her. And she was like, oh, do you know, Sean? And I could see my dad's wife getting paler and paler and paler. And I was like, yeah. I said, I met him when he was in London. I said, we, we lived a few doors away from each other and we used to go to the pub. Ah, oh. and she went off and Mari was like, thank you so much. And it's like, I'm not going to tell some nosy neighbour of yours that your husband's been unfaithful because it's not your fault, no more than it's mine. So it's like, I'm not dropping you in it. Why should I? Next thing, he comes out of the dressing room with Akka Bilk. Oh, I want to introduce you to somebody. And Akka was like, what are you doing here? And, and he went, oh, you know each other. And he was like, oh, yeah, I've, I've met Julie loads of times. So that sort of pissed on his chips. So anyway, he says to me, come back tomorrow. I'll get all the kids together and we can all sit down and have a chat and meet each other and what have you. So I was like, right. Next day. Mum says, oh, shall we go and look at so-and-so? So I'm with her and we're at wherever. And I'm looking at my watch and she was like, oh, I need to go and do such and such. So we did that. And I said, I need to. Oh, no, I need to go and book a ticket. We haven't got a ticket to go home. Blah, 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 blah. By which time it was too late. I'd missed. Go and I was like, I'm supposed to be going to see them there. I'm supposed to be meeting up. What do you want to meet them for? Blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, you've got, you know your brothers and sisters. I'd like the chance to meet mine. But by that time, it was too late. It didn't happen. Then, years later, I'm, um, oh, this was earlier. But another time, I'd spoke to him on the phone. I was living at my mother's, so this was before then. And I phoned up to ask her, could I nick a, a sleeping tablet? Because there was... 
young kid in the stairwell opposite with a boom box going full blast and I had an interview the following morning and I couldn't get to sleep with them and she was like oh I suppose I better tell you Barry's here I'd be like what why so she puts him on the phone and I'm like oh you're on holiday yeah how long for two weeks nice when are you going home tomorrow ah so you weren't going to bother your ass contacting me while you were in London then no so I have met him the entirety two times and I've spoken to him once on the phone in 58 years so every so often I google him to see what he's doing I'm nosy I've said that before so here I am the other day 1st of October, end of September, whenever it was. Google him. Oh, tribute to the bear, to the gentleman, the day the music died. Apparently he died on the 24th of August. And not one person thought it was important to ring me or message me or whatever and just say, Barry's died. I had to read it in the paper. And it's like, his son, Aidan, said, as soon as he found out about me, that he would never speak to me as long as he lived. Because apparently we're just a couple of months or even a month apart in age. I'm not quite sure exactly. And I, it doesn't say on his Facebook. So he hated me from the day he found out about me. And it's like, whoa, that's the dehumidifier, by the way. I'm sorry if it's too loud. It's like, ha excuse me, it's not my fault. It's your father and my mother. Have a word with them. What did I do? I didn't do fucking anything. And it said in the paper that he'd been in a hospice. And it's like, do you not think some of them might have thought maybe now would be the time for him to say what he needs to say or for me to say what I need to say to him to get it off our chests or whatever before he dies no so he was in a hospice for however long he was in a hospice and then he died and then I had to read it in the paper two months later or however many a month later that he was dead And then all I can see are these glowing references for him. Oh, Barry was such a great man. He was this and he was that. And it was like, he had an illegitimate daughter that he decided to fucking sweep under a rug and never, ever tell anybody about. And then I was reading one uh, newspaper post and it said at the bottom, uh, somebody's book, about what was it hang on let me see if I've still got it here to refer to Barry is featured in Harry's book stars show bands and troubadours available in the sound shop price 20 euro and it's like do you know what you should write you should write a book about traveling bandsmen's illegitimate children illegitimate children because I've said numerous times that I was tempted to do a DNA test and find out how many others there are. Because I absolutely guarantee you, I am not the only one. No way am I the only one. So it sort of knocked the wind out of me when I read it. Because it was like, right, I always thought I was unimportant. This is just fucking totally cemented how unimportant I am my mum told me once now imagine your mother saying this to you my mum told me once that when she got pregnant she wanted an abortion but she didn't have enough money and that Barry had given her his phone number which must have been for the shop obviously not for home because he was married 
So she phoned him up and said, I need X amount of money to get an abortion. And he said, what do you expect me to do? I'm married and hung up on her. Who would tell their child that? So I wanted an abortion. I said, well, maybe you should have had one. It would have done us all a fucking favour, wouldn't it? I just... She couldn't give a flying fuck. Neither could he. The family that I've got on her side, the majority of them looked down on me and treated me like shit. His side have had absolutely fucking nothing to do with me. I... D <laughs> it's just... I don't know. I mean, how difficult would it have been on Facebook... DM. Really sorry to tell you, Dad's in hospice. Great. Do you know what I mean? I'd have known then. I'd have been prepared. His wife died many years ago. She was a lovely lady. So it's not like he didn't want to upset her. And I actually spoke to her more than I did him that night when he phoned. He ran away and gave her the phone. And I said, oh. And she said, I told him. She said, I've told him every day to ring you. And it's like, she was fine with it. Obviously not fine with it. But she didn't take it out on me because she knew it wasn't my bloody fault. So once she died, he could have come and visited me any time he wanted to. But could he be bothered? No. And then it's like in all the things. Oh, Barry is uh, left behind his three sons and daughter. And I just want to write to them all and go, um, excuse me, there were two daughters. He's not the gentleman you thought he was. <sighs> Family, huh? And I, it's like people say to me, oh, you're so strong and, you know, you're so clever or you're so, you know, you, do, you sort yourself out. You don't look for help. Really? Why? Why do you think that is? Because I've had none. <laughs> I've had to look after myself my entire life. No one has given a fuck apart from my gran who died when she was six, who died when I was 16. Half of me wishes I did, I had done something while he was alive. But then the other half of me is saying, do what? And would it have affected him? No. And I guarantee you, if I'd said something, they'd have said, oh no, she's just some weird woman from it. She's not, she's not related to us. I spoke to his daughter on Facebook. And once, um... I asked a question because something had come up at the doctor's and so I asked her about the family history and she wrote back and she went, you asked me that before. Oh, I'm terribly sorry if I forgot your family history that I know fuck all about and I may have asked years ago but I need to know the answer now. Don't put yourself out and try and help me, will you? No, fine, whatever, fuck off. Anyway, so I ended up I don't know if it was that that triggered it or what. So I've ended up in a fibro flare for two weeks where all I've been doing is sleeping. And now I need to get back to the nine million videos that I should have done <laughs> when I was uh, too tired to do them all. And it's like, I'm thinking, what should I title this? And I sort of know if I put my dad died I'll get condolences and it's like I don't even want condolences do you know what I mean it's like I wanted him to step up when he was alive and I kept giving him the benefit of the doubt and did he ever no so 
that my friends is why I have not been around for the last couple of weeks and how an illegitimate daughter deals with the death of their dad can't call him that I can't call him father what is he sperm donor who knows anyway if you stay to the end thank you very much and I hope to see you in the next one